I'm finally at the spot on my free-to-play account where I'm going to start thinking about what kind of rare champions I want to keep on the account, which ones are going to be turned into food, like Poo Poo Berserker over here, and which ones I'm going to be keeping and maybe taking up to level 50. So, what is up, guys? This is Corb, and welcome to a rare champ for every faction that you probably want to keep, especially on a beginner account, even just to take up to level 50 to help you out a crap ton in secret rooms and in faction wars. Starting off with the factions in reverse order, as we always do, we've got, of course, the Sylvan Watches. I'm going to try and lean more towards the uh, non-void rares if I can, but obviously Tree Shield Knot is an incredible rare champion reviver, and so if you can get your hands on a Tree Shield Knot, he's a great champ to take up to level 50, no doubt about it. Uh, Flannon is also great, good old Bowsmith Flannon. Um, very, very solid rare in the Sylvan Watches. Me, I'm going to go ahead and shine a spotlight on good old Ingrid Twistsaf. Love this guy, man. The A1 is a double header that has a chance of placing brief version of decrease defense. The A2 and the A3 are where he really comes into his own. However, they are both attack all enemies style skills with a little bit of 10 meter fill on his A2 here. And then on the A3, both of them are 310 cooldowns, by the way, which is great. Uh, and then on the A3, attack all enemies before attacking, place an increased accuracy buff on allies for two turns and has a 75% chance uh, fully bugged up of placing a leech debuff for two turns. So he's bringing that survivability to your entire team as well, right? That key healing uh, from leech, which can be so, so useful into wave content. This guy is great in his stun set. If you can get Inga to his staff just nice and fast, so he's taking plenty of turns and he's in that stun set, those two AoE skills, the leech debuffs, the amount of survivability and control that he's bringing to your Faction Wars teams uh, for your Sylvan Watchers make him honestly a great, great value pickup to keep and take to level 50. Next up, we've got the good old Shadow Kin. I don't know why I'm saying good old, by the way. The rare champions suck. Okay, the red. I think the Shadow Kin might have... Do they have the worst rare champions in the game, or is that the orcs? I don't even know about it, but it's really bad. Okay, it's 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 not a good selection. Um, I guess I mean Fnatic gives a little bit of what, like a little bit of uh, debuff cleanse on his A3, but he's a void, so it's, it's it's gonna be quite a while until you get him. Probably if like you're like a newer account watching this, you just don't get that many void shards, right? Especially if you're sticking to free to play. Odachi. Fine, we'll make Adachi our pick, man. He has a very low chance to place Provoke on his A1, but it is a Provoke. He brings a weak version, 30% version of increased defense uh, and block debuffs on his A3, which is fine. A little bit of self-shielding and an attack all. I don't know, man, he's crap. I wouldn't recommend taking Adachi up to level 50, but for the sake of consistency in this video, I'm going to try and pick one rare for every faction, so... There it is, man. Maybe I'm sleeping on, like, Life Taker or something. What do you guys think, man, for the Shadowkin? I think that most of them are pretty crappy. Next up, we're going to move on into the Dwarves. And the Dwarves fare a little bit better. They've got some decent, actually very, very good uh, Void Rare Dwarves. And here, Kerzad is fantastic as a champ to honestly take up to max level, probably. He's going to help you out into the Iron Twins dungeon once you have him uh, built out with 100% crit, and he's just a great champ to have. You can also put him in a stun set as well, and he has great wave control uh, in the stun set. Bulwark can help you out into early clan boss. Master Butcher is a rare champ cheat code that's going to help you out into um, the Dreadhorn Bommel boss in Doom Tower, so he's a great pickup. I think Purely on the theme of Faction Wars, though, I'm going to go ahead and give it to good old Candleguard, man. Candleguard has a couple of AoE skills, similar to Ingrid, so she can be put into a stun set eventually and do a lot of control for your team, and that's great. But you can also build her out as an early damage dealer for your Dwarf Faction if you just want to take her up to level 50. Um, on the A3, she brings an increased attack buff on herself and an increased crit rate buff 15% on herself for 3 turns and then attacks into all enemies. So you can build her out with 85% crit rate, she takes care of the rest, and she does a pretty reasonable amount of damage. Now, when you eventually do replace her with a better dwarf uh, damage dealer, you can eventually then just put her in that stun set, and she can, yeah, just be, her role can shift to, like, a wave controller, right? Because the A2 is also an attack all enemies with a chance to weaken. So you can just kind of retire her into a stun set eventually if you've built out your candle card for damage at one point and then replace it down the line. Next up, we've got the Knight's Revenant faction, which, as we scroll on down here, oh, what's this? There's a Rector Drath over here, who'da thunk it? You can get your hands on a Rector Drath and a Ugo completely for free by standing up to raid using my beginner promo link, which is down below at the top of the video description, man. Make sure that you signed out of Plyrian Play, click on that link, you get yourself Ugo and Rector Drath once your account hits level 25. You can also use the beginner promo code 
mid-game top to get your hands on Sigmund, the high shield, another free legendary champion once your account hits level 30. It's three insane champions to start your new account off with, and just an incredible way to launch a new free-to-play adventure or a new alt account or something like that, man. Okay, on to the rares for the Knight's Revenant faction, man. We're doing pretty good over here. Honestly, the rare champs for Knight's Revenant are very, very impressive compared to, well, compared to the Shadowkin. Let's put it like that. Executioner, great wave control. He's got like an attack all enemies with uh, decreased turn meter and uh, decreased speed. Good stuff. Not a bad champ at all. Uh, Crimson Slayer, I actually leveled this champ up to 50 on my main account for the triple hitter on a A1 for helping me out against Fire Knight. It also has a chance to play sleep, so I did use her into Sand Devil's Necropolis as well for just sleeping up on the boss. Uh, she's also got some 10 meter control as well on her A2, so I was actually using her into uh, Scarab King in Doom Tower for the longest time as well. Good little progression rare, man. I like myself a little bit of Crimson Slayer action. I think that my sp Oh, Renegade is a great Void rare as well, by the way. But again, I'm going to try and step away a little bit from the Voids unless it's like... Uh, well, let's be real. Unless it's Cold Heart. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, Renegade is a great, great Void rare as well. Brings some cooldown reduction skills that can be very, very key and just scale very, very well into um, into teams where she's like the only rare champion and so she's reducing the cooldowns of more powerful champions than herself. Uh, yeah, she can be great. I think we're going to go ahead though and spotlight Longsword Torox who just brings in a crazy, crazy amount of control into your faction crypts. I actually leveled, have him leveled up to level 40-ish. I, th I think he's about level 40 on my main account right now, so I haven't maxed him out at all. He still helps out so much in Faction Wars, dudes, because of his A2. He's got an attack all enemies, buffs himself up with weak version of increased defense, then has a 65% chance booked of placing a provoke debuff for one turn across all enemies. I actually have him geared out, get this, in a frost set on my main account, right? I just had a lot of like half decent frost gear lying around. That's like five and six star, and I don't really want to use it on anybody else. So I was like, you know what? Let's just give it all the Torox, okay? He lands the Provoke, enemies are going to attack into him, and then they have that small chance of being frozen after attacking into him, after being provoked. So they end up getting controlled for two turns uh, instead of just the one, which is great. It actually works out pretty good. And given I wasn't using that Frost Gear on anybody anyway, uh, it actually sort of worked out. I'm not recommending that you build out your Longsword Torix in Frost Gear, by the way. That's not what I'm saying. But yeah, he just brings a great amount of control. Also, his passive makes it so that he counterattacks when hit by an enemy under Provoke debuff. Why is that so good? Well, he counterattacks him with his A1, which then has a chance of placing Leech, and so he brings some extra healing and survivability to the team as well. As far as rare AoE provokers go, um, he's not the most reliable in the game, but he's reliable enough and he gets a job done, especially just to take into level 50, right? You don't want to be taking this guy up to 60 uh, by any means. Next event for the Dark Elves, and in case it's not obvious, by the way, we're also going to be missing out on the starter champions because, frankly, Kale is... If you start off with Kale, you're almost definitely going to be taking him up to level 60 anyways, right? We've got some great options in here, though. Spirit Host is a damn good one, mostly because she brings the strong version of increased attack uh, on her A2. She's also campaign farmable, which is great, so you can get your hands on a Spirit Host nice and easily. And again, she's a great one to take up to level 50. Me, I think we're going to go ahead... Oh my god, how can I not spotlight Cold Heart, though? Just in case you're a new player watching this, Cold Heart is the best rare champion in the game. It's not that close. Um, she's crazy as hell. She has a quadruple hitter on the A1, which is great into uh, particular boss encounters, things like Fire Knight, where you're looking to break down uh, shield charges against the boss and uh, reduces shield stacks. Yeah, she can reduce down four stacks with a single A1. And then on the A... Uh, sorry, uh, A3, it's an attack one enemy, decrease the target's 10 meter by 100%, and has extra 30% chance of inflicting a crit. So you build her out with 70% crit rate. That's all she needs. Damage increases according to enemy max HP. That's the biggest deal here. She can hit for hundreds of thousands once you have her fully built out at level 60. Yeah, she's one of those few rare champs in the game that you're definitely going to be building out to level 60 if you pull a cold heart. I also do want to spotlight Painkeeper as well. I think that she's a great kind of like honorable mention uh, for the Dark Elves too. Mostly because of her A3. Very, very unique skill for a rare champion to have this. Decrease the cooldowns of all ally skills by one turn. Bookable down to a four turn cooldown. Skills like this that just have so much impact. Like you play a painkeeper at level 60 alongside a whole bunch of uh, good quality epics and legendaries. And she can hold her own just fine because she's increasing their effectiveness by so much. 
uh, by just spamming out this A3 as much as she possibly can, that she just kind of earns her place as like a value pick on a lot of teams. She can also be used on certain unkillable style clan boss teams as well. Uh, I think that she's great into faction wars. She's just great into a lot of places, man. So I think Pain Keeper is well worth a mention. We actually called out like three champions for the Dark Elves, man. Okay, we're gonna speed things along a little bit faster than that, man. So on to the undead hordes. All right, so Frozen Banshee and Grave Chill are both great champs to take up to level 50 uh, or sometimes even level 60 for Frozen Banshee. If you need a Poisoner into Clan Boss, Frozen Banshee is great for that purpose. Grinner, if you talk about Faction Wars, Rare champion with a revive, which is a big deal. Of course, you want all of your champions alive at the end of every Faction Wars stage. Um, so that you get the three stars on that faction war stage and earn yourself all those saucy saucy rewards and so Grinner could be a great champ to take up to level 50. I'm gonna go ahead and spotlight Banshee because I think that she's not called out quite enough, right? She's got that attack all enemies on her A1, which is a huge huge deal. You know what's coming. Of course, we're gonna bring up the stun set possibilities with this champ, but she also has a small chance of placing a decreased defense debuff for one turn on this skill as well. Her A2 is also an attack all enemies with a 70, oh sorry, 65% chance rather of removing one random buff from each target. And while the A3 is fine, attack two times at random, each check has a chance of placing block active skills debuff for one turn. You can honestly just disable the A3, forget about it and just put her in a stun set <laughs> and just let her two AoE skills do all of the work and land all of that juicy, juicy control. And honestly, a little bit of buff peel uh, from enemy targets as well on the A2 is just fine. You know, you're probably going to find value out of that as well. So Banshee, a fantastic, fantastic champ to take up to level 50 for Faction Wars. Okay, man. Demon Spawn. As a bit of an FYI for Demon Spawn, of course, Fellhound is one of the, if not the quickest campaign farmer in the game. Definitely the fastest rare champion campaign farmer in the game. And so if you get yourself a Fellhound, you're probably going to be maxing Fellhound out. But you know what, man? Forget good old Abyssal over here, who's fine, by the way. Abyssal is fine to take up to 50, I think. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say Diabolist. I think people sleep on Diabolist because she's campaign farmable. I think people underestimate Diabolist because she's campaign farmable. This A2, it's a strong version of increased speed, right? After an attack all enemies uh, on this A2. I think that's great. It's quite hard to come by on a rare champion, the strong version of increased speed. And it's great to have this in your uh, your back pocket for the likes of Faction Wars. And then on the A3, fill the 10 meter of all allies by 15% and decrease the 10 meter of all enemies by 15%. So it does mean that you have to build her out with some accuracy, but other than that, you just build her as fast as possible and just, yeah, have an unprecedented amount of control over enemy waves. That's it. I, think, I just think she does a hell of a lot of work, even as a level 50 champ. So I think my call out for Demon Spawn has got to be Diabolist. Okay, man, it's time for the Orcs. What do we do here, man? I mean, this is just a crap faction, dude, in terms of res. It's just garbage. I know there'll be somebody out there right now watching this video. Oh, what are you talking about, man? You know, Tree Feller is S tier or something, you know? Everyone will have their own take on this. Um, uh, obviously, Gallic, if you started off with Gallic, which, why the hell did you do that to yourself? God, man, you absolute masochist. But um, you can take him up to 60. He can do fine for you. Um, but even if you pull him kind of late for the Orcs faction, or like a few months in or something, even then, you probably shouldn't take him up to level 50. Because you're probably not that far away from finding a better orc damage dealer among the epic champs anyway. I mean, regardless of that, I can't say Gallic anyway because he's the starter champ and that's against the rules. Okay, so maybe we just gotta look at like Ironclad or something. I mean, on his A2 here, you just have some debuff removal. Re uh, remove one random debuff from all allies, then place an increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. On a 310 cooldown. Maybe that's fine. I don't know. Does that justify taking him up to, uh, to a level 50? He's got a pretty unique passive as well. When healed, will attack all enemies inflicting damage proportional to any surplus heal. Damage inflicted is equal to 50% of any surplus heal. So, I don't know, maybe there's something you can do with that. I don't know, is Ironclad going to be the pick? Realistically, here, I wouldn't. I'd say just don't take any Orc Rares uh, up to 50, to be honest. Unless maybe Gallic, but... Okay, man. Skinwalkers. I mean, Nalhorn continues to be one of the best provokers in the game uh, of rare quality. It is a place provoked deep on all enemies for 110 on a 310 cooldown, then buffs himself with increased defense. Um, for this skill alone and how reliable this provoke is, yeah, Nalhorn is probably the man. I'll go ahead and shout out Tolog as well, though. Tolog, a relatively new-ish uh, rare champion for the Skinwalkers. He's one of, another one of those rare quality revivers, which are great to have to take into Faction Wars. And again, you can take him up to level 50, and he'll do 
a stupendous amount of work for you. He does also bring a good amount of healing as well. Um, on the A2, it's an increased defense buff on all allies for two turns and a 15% continuous heal buff on allies for one turn. And that might not seem like that much, but then you consider that his passive as well. Whenever a continuous heal buff placed by an ally from the Skinwalker's faction expires or is removed or is stolen, place a weak version of continuous heal on that ally for one turn as well. So, yeah, his continuous heal buff is actually a little bit stronger than, you know, it might seem on the surface. He brings a good amount of healing and that revive can be crucial for three-starring your faction wars uh, stages for the Skinwalkers, man. So, Torlog, one worth looking out for. Okay, man, on to the lizard men. Harrispex is another rare lizard men reviver. It's definitely worth considering. Terex is actually very, very similar to Torox. Terex is a uh, provoke. It's not like the most reliable provoke in the world. It's a 75% chance to place the provoke on an AoE on his A2, uh, but it's only bookable down to a 310 cooldown. And so there's a little bit of a gap there in how much control this guy can get off, but he's a pretty solid rare to uh, take up to 50 if you do happen to pull yourself a Terex. But these are both voids. I would say don't sleep on Metal Shaper as well. Not because he's particularly good in Defaction Wars, but for new players out there, if you've not yet experienced the joy that is trying to conquer Scarab King, uh, the Scarab King boss in Doom Tower, then Metal Shaper can be a great, great way to maintain shield buffs across your entire team when taking on the Scarab King. Shield buffs being absolutely crucial to maintain for the entire fight against Scarab King. So the idea is, is that you fully book up this skill so that it becomes a two turn cooldown. And then you just make Metal Shaper the fastest champion on your team so that he constantly spams this A2 and keeps the shields up on everybody, um, which is absolutely crucial into Scarab King, you know? Uh, if you don't know yet, then I won't spoil the fun, okay, for you new players out there, but oh my God, Scarab King is not a fun boss to take on. Metal Shaper is a huge, huge help. Even at a level 50, he can do a crazy amount of work for you against that boss man. So yeah, a bit of a mixed bag with the Lizard Men, mostly the Void Rares that you're gonna be wanting to look to hold on to though for Faction Wars purposes. Next up, we've got the Ogryn Tribes. So Roughstone is another one of those rares that has an attack all enemies uh, on his A1, I believe. He does indeed, which means that he can work out pretty decent in his stun set. But I mean, it just feels impossible to not shine a spotlight on, for me, what is one of the best rare champions in the game. Uh, alongside the likes of, you know, Cold Heart and Kezad. Uh, Bellower, he might be a void rare. I'm going to go ahead and spotlight him anyway. This guy is crazy as hell. Uh, yeah, every single one of his skills is an attack all enemies. Makes him fantastic for a stun set right away. You can also build out your Bellower, like I have on my main account, to do enough damage to campaign farm. And uh, he clears like stage 12 3 of uh, Brutal Campaign in like seven or eight seconds. Like he's very, very fast indeed, which is awesome, you know. And he's also in a stun set as well as he's doing it on my main account. So I can still use him in wave based content elsewhere. And he does a great, great job. For the Barbarians, we know her and we love her. I think it can only really be the one. I mean, a couple of shout outs, I suppose, but Soulborn Boya does have an attack all enemies on her A1 as well, as well as a pretty potent, I think it's a A2, uh, is capable of smacking pretty hard. It's an attack one enemy with a chance of, uh, increased chance of placing a critical hit. will also ignore 75% of the target's defense, so she can do a good amount of damage single target as well, which is great, but yeah, the A1 being an attack all enemies with an extra chance of placing a crit means you can build her with 75% crit chance, then put her in a stun set, and she can do sort of just a mix of damage and wave control. So Soulborn Boya is fantastic. Again, to take up to 50 for use in Faction Wars. She can do an amazing, amazing job. Um, I think I'm just gonna, I mean, let's just cut to the chase, man. It's gonna be War Maiden, isn't it? It's gotta be, especially if you didn't start off your account with uh, the promo link that gifts you with Tyrell, so you don't have a reliable uh, decreased defense champ on your account. War Maiden's probably going to be a champ that you take up to 50 anyway for use in other areas of the game, but specifically for the Barbarian Faction Crypts, yeah. Having a 100% land rate, 310 cooldown, strong version of decreased defense against all enemies is just kind of invaluable. And uh, yeah, she's been a fantastic champ since Raid's creation, pretty much, and she still holds on to a very, very high tier spot amongst non-void rares indeed. Might even be one of the best non-void rares in the game. Next up, man, Sacred Order. Never has a faction had so many rare champions and have so many of them just be absolutely mediocre or trash. 
Okay, people have tried out Castigate. It hasn't really worked out from what I've seen uh, for other people. I've not built them myself, but I just hear bad things. Uh, War Priest kind of falls off very, very quickly. I mean, you get it for free, but she's kind of better just used as food, <laughs> to be honest, in my view. Um, there'll be people out there who disagree with that, but that is what it is. Uh, if you start off with Aethel, of course, you'll take her up to level 60, but if you didn't start with Aethel and then you pull her from a shard, she's still probably not worth uh, taking up. To be fair, I mean, unless you pull her like three or something, okay, like fair enough, you know, you can use her as like a second damage dealer, I guess, and take her up to 50 then, but unless you pull her super, super early, probably not worth it. I think I'll go ahead and shout out, I guess, Mother Superior. She's all right. She's fine. She's nothing remarkable. Um, I've took her up to level 40-ish on my account just because I got a, like a three-star perfect soul for her and I thought, you know what, I might as well. She can help out in Faction Wars a little bit. Um, she brings a direct heal on her A2 and then shields the, that ally who was healed for any like surplus healing, which is fine. It's on a 310 cooldown. And then she just brings more healing on her A3 as well. Place a weak version of continuous heal on all allies for two turns and then shield uh, allies equal to 10% of their HP if that target allies health is already full and so yeah she's all right she's all right okay what I actually recommend that you take up <laughs> a mother superior at level 50 like oh my god man you pulled a mother superior man gotta get it at level 50 as soon as possible nah not really you know but again I'm trying to call out a champion for every faction some are kind of a little bit tougher than others and let me know by the way if you feel like I've been sleeping on any particular rare champ as for the High Elves, honestly, it's a little bit more promising. Of course, Elhane being the starter champ can be great to take up if you do have her. Eris is actually a champ that you might want to level up and take up to 50 or maybe even 60 for use in Demon Lord Clan Boss. And so you might end up taking her up anyway, but I'm going to cover more uh, regarding Demon Lord champs and Clan Boss champions that newer players can look out for in a future video, so do make sure that you stay tuned for that. Relic Tender is one of the best rare champions in the game. Frankly, she brings uh, a revive on a A3, which is great, and she's one of the only, actually just one of the best, if not the best, debuff remover rare champions in the game as well, man. With the 310 cooldown, remove all debuffs from all allies, then place a heal buff on them for a couple of turns as well. Fantastic, fantastic rare support champion. Honestly, Prosecutor isn't too bad as well. It's a decent little champ over there. I'm going to go ahead though and give this one to Apothecary, man. I think we've got to. The fact that he's a non-void rare, right? He's magic affinity, he's much, much more accessible than the void rares. Brings a triple hitter on the air one, helping you out into Fire Knight. Uh, brings a heal that can also be a crit heal. And then on the air three, brings that all important 10 meter fill and the strong version of increased speed on all allies on a 310 cooldown. Uh, yeah, the guy's basically Diabolist on steroids. That's pretty much Apothecary. He's, he's, he's a Diabolist that also brings a big fat chunky heal and a triple hitter air one so yeah and finally that brings us to the banner lords which would you know it man this segment the high shield you can actually get this champ right now if you create a new raid account using my promo link and input the big enough promo code mid game top man you get this guy at level 30 uh on your new account if you input that beginner promo code but there you do go banner lords is tough man they have a lot of garbage they have a lot of crap here dude i mean valerie's campaign farmable uh, the problem with Valerie is that she brings increased attack on her A2, but it's only the weak 25% version. But she does increase the duration of all buffs and all allies by 110. And the value of that can't really be underestimated, especially as you start getting more and more powerful champs that are just spreading a crap load of powerful buffs across your entire team. Then increasing the duration of all of those buffs by 110 can actually be very, very valuable. Uh, so Valerie's in this strange place where she's... A little bit useless to build super early on on your account, but I don't know, like six months in or something, having like a five star Valerie can actually be pretty good um, and can fit in pretty decently into a faction wars team. She does also bring a shield buff as well and a little bit of healing uh, on her A3. It is, however, on a 510 cooldown, which sucks a little bit. So I think that most of her value actually comes uh, from the A2 once all is said and done, but she is worth shouting out for sure. Um, I will also go ahead and shout out good old Dagger, which is not a champ that I've built out myself. Oh my god, I often forget how low her defense stat is. Sub 800 defense? And 12,000 health. She is very, very squishy indeed, uh, the old dagger is. But she does bring not quite as good as War Maiden, but she's trying her best, okay? And attack all enemies with a 75% chance this time. So not 100% like War Maiden, but 75% chance of placing the strong version of decreased defense debuff for two turns on a 310 cooldown, okay? It's kind of nutty that she's a void rare 
And so it's much, much harder to get than the campaign farmable War Maiden. But her decreased defense skill is weaker. Just has like a lower land rate <laughs> than War Maidens, you know? That's a testament to how good War Maiden is for the Barbarian faction. But if you do happen to pull a Void Shard and grab, uh, grab yourself a Dagger, yeah, she could be well worth taking up to a level 50 as well to help you out in your Banner Lords faction wars. And now, man, that is about going to do it for this one. If you feel like I slept on any particular champ that newer players should be looking to hold on to and maybe take up to level 50, especially if they're free-to-play players and are going to have limited resources, then make sure to call it out down below in the comments, man. For now, thanks for watching. Remember, if you're looking to start off a new raid account, then do so using my beginner promo link down below at the top of the video description to jump start your new account with a free copy of Ugo and Rector Dreth, which you can see lovely on screen right now. But now I'm going to thank all of you guys for watching. Do please enjoy the rest of your day. And I'm going to catch all of y'all just a tad bit later, man.